What's up everyone? Back with some more Bloodborne. We're going to be completing some side quests here. One of them leads to the ending that we're going for, so I told a bunch of people to go to this clinic, which is at the beginning of the game, right? Thinking that it's a safe haven. I think I was talking in a previous episode where I was technically being a bad man by sending them here, telling them it's safe. Then when you come here after the Blood Moon, you can do it before, but I, I do it after. They drop Blood Vial on that one. Then we got all these other ones here. Let me kill this one. This guy here. Each one is technically one of the NPCs I sent here. They got turned into the aliens. And then up here should be Yosefka. She was the one that did all these experiments and turned the people into that. She's having a bad time up here though, since the blood moon has happened. God, I'm nauseous. Have you found it? Progressing. I knew it. I'm different. Oh, God, it feels awful. Don't you see how they writhe? Writhe inside my head. It's rather rapturous. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> don't remember if I, uh, have to do the thing now. I think I do the thing now. Yep. So that's the item. So that's, that's the completion of the quest. I was kind of flipping a coin there. Should I should I kill her now or kill her later? Killing her now gave me exactly what I needed. Wonderful. And then I think there's one more yeah, one more here. So sedative. One was an old lady looking for refuge. Another one was a skeptical man. And uh, the last one was the nun, who actually, if you send her to the the church, she goes and uh, kills the other girl that you get blood from. But if you don't want to do that, then you, uh, you don't have to. You can send her here and kill her. Be the bad guy of the, the game. I've made really bad choices in terms of NPCs. I've killed a lot of the NPCs. We're left with the, the, the mistress lady, Ariana. She actually is feeling quite under the weather right now. I'm, uh, actually, at the beginning, I don't want to be here right now. I want to try and get myself to the chapel, so we'll uh, pause this episode and jump back to the chapel real quick. We're continuing our episode here. Hello again, everyone. Sorry about that pause. I just didn't think anyone wanted to see me teleport and walk and teleport and walk. We had to get back to an area that uh, can somewhat be rather difficult to access from where the beginning was. I didn't want to run too far. Didn't want to waste your time with teleporting, watching the load screens. So where we're gonna go is actually where we've been before. We went down this area once before, where the executioners are. With those gunmen. Are the gunmen still there? Oh, I fell. I didn't want to fall. So gunmen. Yep, there are still gunmen. Okay. 
So we can just we can just rush past them. Because what we're gonna do is get an access to the lecture hall. Now in order to do that, we have to go say hi to this this guy here. In our last episode when we defeated Rom, we got teleported to this area. And that's exactly what we want. We want to say hi. Please have mercy. And here we are, in a nightmare realm. The lecture building, or the lecture hall. We can access our lantern here. Now this whole area is entirely optional. I like to do it because mainly it gives you blood echoes. Gets you more prepared for the last boss. And especially if we are taking on the secret last boss. What a joy it is to be whole. It must be such a pleasure. You're nigh on a beast of the field. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you. I don't know if I can get him right now actually. There's lots of little crevices and hallways that actually lead to nowhere. But you have to be careful because you hear all that breathing. There's definitely enemies around. Certain doors open, certain doors do not. Hmm. You look gross. Now if I remember... Even though my memory is pretty bad. If I remember correctly, this might be... A farming area. I don't know if it's now or if it's later. But there's an area in the game where basically there's a lot of those scholars or students that are just a pile of goo. And it's in a room like this and you can just wail at all of them. And it gives you like 20,000 to 30,000 blood echoes. No problem. Every time you run through it. Red Jelly. I believe Red Jelly is used for Chalice Dungeons. It's another thing we'll be doing in our series here. Chalice Dungeons are part of the game, and they're one of the most difficult parts of the game. I would say, aside from the Orth Orphan of Kos. Ah, here it is. So we, we have found the area. I don't want to fight them right now. I want to get to where all the items are. coming at me. See how many there are? There's so many. And they're upset that I am intruding on their learning. Oh. I need to heal. I need to heal some more. Maybe I can open this door. That was okay. Nice, nice. They're still coming at me. Yeah, I disturbed their learning so much. They're so upset. With their epic barf. They got stretchy arms. They got ghost liquid they spit at you. say I don't want to fight them and then there they come all through the doors trying to get me is that it that's it you can roll through basically all of the the chairs here which is pretty funny 
break down the whole room, basically. But I think that's it for the first floor. We have a second floor that we do not have access to. You gain access to that after uh, beating the next main boss, not where we are now. We're in an optional area. There is an optional boss in the next section of this uh, nightmare realm. And uh, we're going to go into that. It's a horrifying place. I personally like the boss. The boss is pretty fun. You're fighting one of those things that took you here. Which is pretty cool. There's a dude up on the, the ceiling there. So you want to kind of bait him down. If he will come down, there he goes. Then you can get your items, Madman's Knowledge. It'll gain, give us more insight, even though I don't think we really need more insight. We're already at 45. Once you hit 60, lots of things start happening weird. You gain a different uh, tune to the game. You get different background music. You see everything that is not supposed to be there. That, I would say, is by far the best aspect that they added to this game. When you don't have insight, and then when you have insight, you know, it's gaining the eyes, like Master Willem has said. Once you've gained eyes, you get to see what the world actually looks like. This isn't part of the world. This is, this is a nightmare dimension. thing runs off the ledge and now we can't gain any of the the goodies from it there's lots of tombstones around here and then these guys these guys these guys are pretty rough can't explore everywhere in this game, like Elden Ring. Elden Ring literally, if you can access it, you can explore it. I think this here is supposed to be an elevator. Shortcut. There's more of these beast men all over the place. There's one there. Like, their heads are sideways. He's breathing fire. Okay. I don't even know if he can hit me with that, but I'm not gonna chance it. That's a horrifying thing over there in the, the pit. I don't want to deal with that. In other places, you know, we're hitting for 100, almost 200 with some hits, and these guys are taking 40 damage. Chunky. They are chunky ba uh, boys. Ugh, squids. Well, I think that's it for this first little area. The next area, they, ca they call this the Nightmare Frontier, and it, it really gives you nightmares. So, we will start going through in our next episode in uh, this horrifying place. Until then, sweet dreams, because after this, you'll be getting nightmares. So, see you in the next one. Ciao!